everybody um, you're about to watch a short video that I just made it's about nine minutes long um, I did want to give you an idea um, as you're watching it write down the different regions that I am talking about because you can use those for your homework assignment um, I mentioned it in the video but I don't mention it to the very end and I wanted to tell you now so you don't have to go back all the way back to the beginning of the video rewatch it in order to get um, the information from your homework assignment so I hope that's helpful and I hope you enjoy at least reviewing the video um, that I've made for you. Enjoy. Hi, this is Mr. Laframboise and I'm going to talk about the theme region. Region is one of the five themes of geography um, and many students are familiar with regions. In third grade uh, they studied the different regions of the United States so they know perhaps that the United that Michigan is part of the Midwest um, but oftentimes students don't realize what makes up a region why a region is um, why that those collection of places create a region so we're going to talk a little bit about regions we've talked about this today and I'm going to go over what we talked about just so that you can um, review it at home at your leisure um, so basically what a region is let me just pull up the definition here it's a group of places that have physical features such as um, like Michigan has a lot of flat land and actually the Midwest has a lot of flat land and, and fertile soil uh, which makes it good for growing crops for example um, so a group of places that have group of places that have physical features, human characteristics, or both in common. Uh, a human characteristic would be something like um, a language spoken, for example. Um, we here in the United States and Canada, if you look here at the map um, of the globe here, this here where I'm tracing this outline would be considered an English-speaking region. Um, over here is a little in Quebec they speak French also but they do speak English um, on the other hand down here pretty much most of Latin America um, Mexico and South is a Spanish speaking region now Brazil is an exception because they speak Portuguese um, but this would be considered a Spanish speaking region um, so if someone who's studying languages could focus on uh, the languages and, and divide up regions based upon language. Um, as I said earlier, um, another way that we can talk about it or we can look at the Midwest or the reason we can look at the Midwest as a region would be because it does have physical features, meaning flat, fertile soil, and human characteristics. A human characteristic could be the fact that we have a lot of farmers or farming that goes on um, in our area. That would be a human characteristic. Language would also be a human characteristic, as we spoke of. Um, another human characteristic, if we were to look on at uh, the United States and Canada, um, in fact, probably most of the Western Hemisphere, we would say, because most, if we're looking at, at religions, we would say that most uh, people are Christian. So we would call this a, uh, a Christian region, uh, where there are other parts of the world where like most of Africa actually, at least most of um, North Africa and South West Asia is actually a region and most people there are Muslim. There are some exceptions, for example in Israel would be an exception. Um, let's see what else here. If, now we're talking a lot about regions on a large scale, on a global scale or within countries, right? but there are many other types of regions um, on a smaller scale so let's take a look if we were to zoom in we're talking about religion we just talked about uh, the United States being let me turn off these roads the United States being a um, part of a Christian region but if we were to zoom into Oak Park the city of Oak Park for example um, we would certainly find that there are regions within Oak Park certain parts of Oak Park that would that you can consider to be uh, a Jewish region for example because the majority of the people in those areas are Jewish um, so regions can be found in on a real small scale too here is a uh, little model of Norp school that I've been uh, working on over a period of time um, 
And even within NORUP, you could say that there are regions. You can say, for example, that this, this bottom floor here, this is the wing, this is actually my classroom. This is Mrs. Brooks's classroom. This is Mrs. Lorea's classroom. Ms. Kettner's on the other side on the first floor. Um, we make up a region. Our classrooms make up a region. That's the sixth grade core academic region. That is the human characteristic that this group of places have in common. These three classrooms, four classrooms, um, are the group of places. And what they have in common is that we teach the core academic um, courses in the sixth grade. Uh, another region within NORP would be the upstairs. The upstairs is a seventh and eighth grade region. That's where the seventh and eighth grade classes take place. Um, another region would be this back hallway here. That's the elementary school region. We have a fifth grade classroom over here. We have the kindergarten and first and second grades back here. I think there's a third grade class. And we have a couple other elementary classrooms back here. So this would be an elementary school region. Um, if we look back now, let me pull up this other map. I have a map here. I hope you can see um, slight color differences here. Um, this is a region. If, if you follow the, what I'm tracing here, this is another region to which students belong. All students who go to this school, or I shouldn't say that, at least all, all students who go to a public school in this area here, um, this is the Berkeley School District region. This is the city of Berkeley the city of Huntington Woods, and the part of Oak Park that is north of 696, that is another region. That is the Berkeley School District region. The human characteristic that they have in common, this, these regions have in common, is that the students go to a Berkeley School District school. Um, here is a smaller region that's also marked here. If you follow the, the mark here, these two greenish areas here together make the, the Norp School 6th grade to 8th grade region. Okay, all the students from this part of Oak Park and this part of Huntington Woods, when they're in sixth grade, seventh grade, or eighth grade, and they go to the public school, um, they go to Norp School. This section here is also a region. It's a group of places. These neighborhoods, these houses, all go to Norp School if they go to the public schools from kindergarten through fifth grade. This is another region. This is the Burton School region. It also happens to be almost exclusively the uh, city of Berkeley, or city of Huntington Woods. It's not quite because um, the animals in the zoo, for example, don't go to Burton. Uh, at least we hope most of them don't, I suppose. Um, anyhow, so that's another way of looking at, at, a region, at regions. Um, if you consider your own house, think about your own house. Um, there might be, there was an example we used this morning. We were talking about someone's house who had their second and third floor, actually, were all bedrooms. So they were considering that their, uh, their sleeping region. Um, another example was their basement was like their entertainment region where they had, you know, their, their ping pong table or pool table and the television area and things like that. So that was the group of places that were designated for entertainment purposes. Um, so the idea behind regions, again, is that it's a group of places, large or small, doesn't matter, that have physical characteristics, physical features, human characteristics, or both together in common. So the homework assignment for tonight is to identify two regions of which you are a part. That's the first part. And the good news is, is that you can go back and listen to this, and you can just use ones that I've actually given to you. Um, and But you also have to explain what makes those regions. For example, if you say, I live in the NORP school region, you can't just say, I live in a NORP school region and the Midwest region. You have to also say, um, in the Midwest we have, and then explain what's the physical features or human characteristics in common. Or you can say, I live in an English-speaking region because, and explain why it's a region. Um, if you say, I live in the NORP school region, you have to say, because everybody in this region, blank, blank, blank. Okay? So uh, I hope this has been helpful, and good luck on your homework.